What's up guys, Hello Bass with another video. Coming to you, we're gonna talk about chatter baits tonight. Um, talk about a little bit about my favorite chatter baits and bladed jigs that I like to use, how I store them, and most importantly, we're gonna dive into my favorite trailers and show you all the different trailers that I use, uh, wide variety of price ranges, some of the best ones, uh, ones that uh, definitely catch a ton of fish and give you a lot of options. So if you can't find one particular super popular chatterbait trailer or vibrating jig trailer at your favorite local tackle store, one of these will sure to be available and will be sure to help you get bit. So let's face it, spring is here, fish are biting. This is one of the best times of year to be throwing a vibrating jig all year. So let's talk about trailers and get into it. So before we dig in to all these uh, vibrating jig trailers, as you're watching this, please leave a comment below. Let me know what your number one favorite vibrating jig chatterbait trailer is and share it with everybody below. A couple storage options. Uh, a lot of times, uh, until I use a bladed jig or something like that, I'll keep them in their original package and throw them in kind of heavy duty Ziploc bag like this in the boat. Um, that way I can kind of put these in different places. Uh, these are kind of my backups, my, my extra stock. Um, and then uh, some of them I'll open right away and some of them that I know I'm going to use are pre rig I'll put in a kind of a 3700 size like box like this slot it in the main compartment um, Sort all those jigs uh, So I'm sorting all those jigs by size uh, colors so they don't mix together So over the years I've amassed quite a few different vibrating jigs and I got a lot of different options, but day in and day out the three that I am buying currently and mostly fishing are one is the uh, Z-Man Custom Chatterbait, which is a really nice bait. Uh, it's got a great hook. It's got a good hook keeper. We'll open this one up and show you. Um, it's got a pretty big hook on it. It does have a single wire keeper. Um, black anodized or painted blade. Uh, got almost really all the main features you want on a quality Chatterbait. Good components. Um, and this comes in for less than 10 bucks. Uh, so it's a really good value chatterbait. Uh, I've caught a ton of good fish on this. This is one day in day out. If you're looking for a premium bladed jig from Z-Man that doesn't bust the bank, definitely check out the custom. Kind of moving up in the price point, uh, the Thunder Cricket from Strike King, uh, another popular, well-known, uh, readily available. You can get this almost anywhere. Uh, another great vibrating jig from Strike King. Uh, caught pretty good fish on this last year. One year so far, a lot of people are very successful with this. Uh, and then the gold standard these days is the Z-Man Evergreen Jackhammer. Uh, great bait, caught a ton of fish on this. Everybody pretty much knows about them. They're pretty pricey. Um, so uh, you get what you pay for. Uh, all of these are great baits. Not saying that other vibrating jigs, these are the ones I prefer and the ones I use day in and day out as a tournament angler. So let's dig into trailers. There are a multitude of trailers types that I like to use. But it basically comes down to five types of trailers I like to use, and let's dig into these. Uh, the first one that I like to use is the, uh, the Menace Scrub. This one kind of is all by itself. The Striking Menace Scrub, uh, just a great little bait. I use this as a jig trailer in all kinds of situations, but it works really good as a smaller bladed jig trailer as well. But here's one that's been all bit up. Uh, when I fish this, I am typically trying to mimic a craw or a bluegill or something like that. Uh, you can rig it two different directions. You can rig it kind of in line with the bait like this, so the tails are more like a bluegill, or you can turn it flat so it flats like this. I like this way more often. I feel like it better works with the swimming action of the bladed jigs. Uh, so the jigs are rotating like this and like this. These tails are back there, and they're not necessarily fighting it, but they're working with uh, the bladed jig. So. This is great. It's a little bit smaller offering. So if you're in a little bit tougher conditions or you're not sure how big the bait is in the lake or you're pond fishing, this is a great option uh, to present a nice, small, compact, but kind of dense offering to the fish. Um, and there's not a lot to miss when the fish comes up and you're going to get really good hookups. You don't have a lot of tail back here. So if they're coming up and eating your bladed jig, with this menace scrub, you're surely going to get the hook in them most of the time. The next style of uh, trailer that I like to use is a craw or a flapping craw or a swimming craw type uh, soft plastic. And you'll see I've got 
these rigged on all different uh, bladed jigs that I use, so you'll kind of see me switch up as we go through. So, two of my favorite craws, one is the Hammer Craw from Jean LaRue, and the other is the Rage Craw from Strike King. Both really good options. Uh, much like the Menace Scrub, you can rig them uh, horizontally, so you're kind of flat like that. Um, so a little bit different action, or you can turn them on their side like this and get more of a bluegill or a, a shad uh, imitation in that respect. Um, but I really like this one. This is the, uh, so this is a jackhammer with the uh, hammer cross. I like to call this my double hammer rig. Uh, I really like this. I did really well in the fall fishing the Mississippi River. Uh, caught a lot of big smallmouth on this rig. Uh, it's a really good option uh, just to show them something different. This is something that not a lot of people throw. Uh, as a as a bladed jig trailer and I think it has a really good action and it definitely shows the fish something different uh, and can get you bit. One thing to notice about the uh, the, the hammer craw is it comes with these little side appendages. Um, so sometimes I take those off, sometimes I leave them on depending on how much water, how much bulk I want in my presentation. Uh, if I want to ride higher in the, the water column, I'll rig it flat, I'll leave these on, it's going to give the bait more lift. Uh, you can pull those off turn it horiz or vertically, and then your bait will get down better. So you can do a lot of things with all these different trailers and modify them a little bit and get more lift or get it to run a little deeper depending on what you want to do with your bait. I'll have links to all these baits and all these trailers down in the description below. So if you don't catch any of this or you're seriously trying to write this down, you can check the links at any time, click on the links, it'll take you to the baits, uh, and you can look at them in more detail as you have time. My third, fluke style baits. Uh, could be something like uh, a caffeine shad. It could be the original Zoom Super Fluke. You really can't go bad. These are a nice, uh, they're kind of a, almost a cross between a swim bait and the original uh, little twin tails that the original Z-Man used to come with. These have a slightly uh, more finesse. It really lets the chatterbait work more. Uh, you don't have a tail or any appendages. Uh, it really allows the chatterbait to do its thing and it just kind of like shimmers down the tail. It doesn't fight it, it doesn't uh, change the action of the vibrating jig at all. So this is a really good option when you want uh, probably a little bit colder water or if you want to really move the bait really fast, a fluke style bait is a really great uh, option in that case. As you can see here, I've got kind of a, an older fluke style bait um, rigged without a skirt. That's an also an option. This is pretty popular for like schoolers uh, and different opportunities like that. So you can fish this with a skirt or with but when that shakes back there, that little tail just quivers and has a really nice tight action. It doesn't really fight the blade, doesn't fight the skirt. Uh, it just really enhances the action of the vibrating jig. All right, getting into the fourth category, we're going to talk about boot tail swim baits. This is probably the most or the second most popular option for vibrating jig trailers there is. So we're going to run through some of the options. One, Kitek. Premium uh, swim bait. These are really good. They move a ton of water. We'll talk to these in a little more detail. Not my favorite option because they're not super inexpensive and they're kind of pricey. Uh, you can also use Strike King Swimmers. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, kind of Me Too or knockoff brands uh, to the original Kitek that are slightly less expensive and probably a better option for a bladed jig trailer than using the premium Kitex. Uh, the Arsenal Tactical Minnow. This one's new to me. Uh, I know a lot of people have. Uh, Using this bait, I've used a little bit late in the year last year. I'm excited to try it a whole bunch more this year. Uh, the Big Bite Baits Cane Thumper, very underrated. Not a lot of people know about these baits. Uh, these are a great bladed jig trailer as well. Uh, when you want a little bit bigger offering, I like the Gambler Easy Swimmer. Uh, we'll show you how to rig that in just a second. Uh, and another really popular one is Reaction Innovation's uh, Skinny Dipper. The great thing about all these swim bait trailers is there's a ton of great colors to pick from. So you can do a lot of wild things if you really want to match or contrast your bladed jig as far as skirts and things like that. So getting back to bladed jigs, here's one with the Kitek. Uh, I think it's a 3.8. You can go up to some of the bigger sizes. It all depends on what you want to do with your trailer. The particular bladed jig has a little bit of a weed guard on it. So you can rig this right side up. A lot of people like to flip them upside down, which is also an option. It tends to not fight the, the trailer as much. The other thing you can do with any of these boot tails is take them and slice them just like that. So you get a little bit of a wedge on the tail and you get a flat and then you're much more like that fluke style bait um, and you get that same action. So that's another opportunity option. 
If you're not getting bit, if you feel like your chatterbait or your vibrated jig's not running the way you want it, uh, tie trim that boot tail off and use it more like a fluke style bait. And then that, that little tail just gets back and just gets super excited. Uh, it's another great option to look at when you are uh, rigging your vibrating jig. So these are all things to experiment when you're warmer water, dirty water, cold water, tough bite. Uh, play with these different options to, to possibly generate strikes when you're struggling. Or if you're a co-angler or fishing at a team tournament and you're fishing behind somebody, try some of these. Flip your bait upside down, trim the tail, try a different trailer, mix things up. That may generate strikes that you may would get that the other guy may be getting in front of you and you can get more bites as a team. Or as a co-angler, you can be generating bites that that pro is missing. So here's the skinny dipper. Um, I really like the colors on the skinny dipper. It's got a really nice offering. I like this a lot uh, pre-spawn and in the fall when I feel like the the fish in our area are shallow and they're feeding on slightly bigger uh, than average forage and they're looking to feed up. So a lot of times pre-spawn, they're trying to feed up, get healthy before they spawn. And in the fall, especially in this part of the country, before winter, they're looking for a big easy meal to feed up and get that fall feedback on and get super fat uh, before the winter sets in. Similar to that, here's the cane thumper. So similar to the skinny dipper, uh, the big bite baits cane thumper, a really good option. You can play around with full length, biting these down a little bit, uh, flipping them over, cutting the tails, all good options to explore. Uh, and you can see this is that nice tilapia color. looks really good on the back of a bluegill or a green pumpkin type uh, bladed jig. Finally, the fifth category that we're gonna talk about is uh, probably the most well-known now is the Zeko, which is the Yamamoto version. These are becoming more and more popular. They come out with a boot tail. Uh, largely this orient originated with the live or the Lake Fork Live Magic Shad, which was a segmented body kind of fluke swim bait hybrid. The Lake Fork Magic Shad is still a great bait. You can use that uh, if you can find it. But now uh, the Yamamoto bait Zeko is a really popular alternative. Uh, that's what most people really gravitate now. Uh, if you can't find those or you're looking for an option that's maybe slightly more durable, uh, check out the Arizona Custom Baits version. Um, it's called the AFG Force. Uh, both of these really great baits, uh, almost identical action. Try them out, uh, they're very popular. So here's a couple of them rigged up. So here's a green pumpkin one uh, on the back of a green pumpkin uh, bladed jig. Really nice bluegill imitator. Uh, and here you go, you have a white one on the back of kind of a, a chartreuse shad, kind of a bee height delight type uh, color. So that's the Zeko, one of the most popular baits. So. Let's talk about colors before we're done. Uh, to me, there's only just a few colors that you really need. Green pumpkin or something like that for bluegill imitations. Some kind of white or shad minnow looking for when you're really trying to f generate and mimic that shad. So that might be uh, river systems, that may be fall bite. Uh, whenever the fish are shallow pushing shad, definitely look to possibly uh, look at a white or uh, any kind of white and chartreuse combo can be good in a muddy water situation as well. Uh, the green pumpkin uh, definitely uh, is great in natural lakes, uh, post-spawn when they're fry guarding or when they're chasing bluegill bedding fish. Um, anytime you have a lot of grass, a green pumpkin natural bait is a good color. And then lastly, uh, any kind of black, black blue, uh, black glitter option is a really good option in stained to dirty water. Um, anytime you're in low light conditions, you need uh, dark water, look at these black blues. So really, to me, uh, like I said, three colors, some kind of white shad, a green pumpkin, bluegill, natural, and then a black and blue or a black type trailer. You really don't need to get super fancy. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, it's really the, uh, the shape, the profile, the vibration of the bait. That's what gets you bit. Don't get too hung up on getting super specific on your colors. I well, hope you learned something today about vibrating jigs and chatterbaits. Hopefully you picked up a few new trailers to throw in your arsenal, a few new rigging techniques, uh, tweaks that'll help you catch more bass. If you like what you've seen on the channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, uh, like, comment, and as always, we're here to help you catch more bass and suck less.